Um, so me and my trusty whiteboard are going to be doing a little introduction to electronic structure and that kind of thing because it's a lot different from what you've learned in GCSE so be ready to be mind blown. <laughs> from GCSE you know we've got the whole 2882 structure of how many electrons are in all of the shells. So our question for A-levels is what is an atomic orbital? And to answer this, we'd want to, you know, imagine I'm the sun, you know, got my yellow top on. So all the other planets in the solar system are orbiting the sun in different patterns and different distances. So from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, we can't exactly map where an electron is and where it's exactly going to. So instead we have the subshells models where we can assume where it is within space. So electron shells are made up of atomic orbitals and think of an orbital more like the region of space where the electron may be. So there's four main types of orbitals. Um, S is sharp, P is principal, D is diffuse and F is fundamental. So each orbital is made up of two electrons spinning oppositely to each other. So in each orbital, you can have a maximum of two electrons. How you draw the electrons as electron structure is actually with um, many of these. So when you insert the electrons, you actually draw one electron in each box first before you pair them up. So these electrons move around the nucleus in shells or energy levels and these are named principal quantum numbers. So shells furthest from the nucleus have the highest energy. These shells are actually divided into subshells which are given fancy names. So there are four main types of orbitals, S, P, D and F, which mean sharp, principal, diffuse and fundamental. With the subshells they all have different shapes where the electrons are. So with S it's just a spherical shape, a ball, and P is a dumbbell shape and it can be in any of the axis, X, Y or Z. So with D, there's actually two P orbitals and with F, it gets really complicated and you can do that in a chemistry degree if you're really interested. So the number of orbitals in the subshells, uh, S has one, P has three, D has five and F has seven. And think of each of these orbitals as boxes with two electrons spinning oppositely. Uh, so each of these have maximum two electrons in. So when you times the amount of orbitals in the subshell, you get the maximum number of electrons in the subshell. So this is depicted as these diagrams. So to draw in the orbitals, because of the way the electrons repel, you must fill the electrons one at a time instead of as a pair so you'll just draw them individually and then go back to pair them up and that just means that the subshell is able to stay as stable as possible. How does this relate to chemistry as a whole? Um, so most importantly with your periodic table you know with GCSE you kind of look at the table and just think you know metals non-metals transition elements but now we can also see them as blocks of the elements. So group one to group two is the S block because you know there's two electrons in the shells. And then the P block is just over here with all the non-metals. And then really interestingly, we have the D block, which is all the transition metals, which you'll be learning about in year 13. And then, you know, more unknown, we have the F block with all of the newer um, elements which have been found so actually on your periodic table you can help yourself and label the periodic table so this is one of the first things we did in chemistry and you probably can't see but i just have a few annotations so from gcse's um you know just 2882 but now we've got a level with electron shells this n being the electron shell number also known as the principal quantum number. So with one electron shell, you would just have S subshell. So with one principal quantum number, you would have only the S you would have only the S subshell, which would have 
a maximum of two electrons from doing two times one squared. With two electron subshells, you'd have S from four and P. So that would mean you'd have a calculation of two times two squared to get eight maximum electrons. With three principal quantum shells, you'd have S, P and D, which would give you two times three squared, which is 18. And with four principal quantum shells, you'd have S, P, D and F subshells, and you would get 32 electrons. We write this as chemists with this notation where you have the principal quantum number, the subshell, and then the electrons in the suborbital as a power. This is needed to write electrons from our periodic table and ions and things like that, especially in transition elements. So say we wanted to find the electronic configuration for carbon. It has six electrons and is in the P block. You would just go through the periodic table until you get to carbon. This is the second period and this is the second element in the P block. So it would just be written like this with that notation. Another example, say iron, um, it has 26 electrons and is in the D block. So to do this, you would go through the electrons until you'd get to that. So the electronic configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. And why 4s2, you ask? According to the Aufbau principle, the 4s2 subshell is actually a lower energy than the 3d subshell. So it's filled before the 3d subshell which, is, which can be a bit confusing, but you'll definitely understand it and not forget it. So for iron, saying 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6, is quite a lot of effort, right? So chemists, you know, they're quite, you know, lazy. And what they would do is get the noble gases and then you shorthand to write all of the electronic configuration. So all of the noble gases, which are helium, neon, argon, krypton, xeon, and radon, can be used instead of writing out all of the previous subshells as they indicate a full outer shell, as we know. So this is just an electron configuration diagram. It's got the orbitals and how the higher the principal quantum shells are, the more energy they have. So as you can see, 1s has really low energy and 4s has higher energy, uh, just due to the electrons in the shell. So to fill this in with electrons, we have to use Hahn's rule, which as I said before, is that the subshell is singly filled before it is filled with each electron, which just makes all of the electrons as stable as possible. So say for the electron configuration of chlorine, to fill this out, I will just... Uh, now in chemistry, you're gonna come across quite a lot of exceptions, unfortunately, which we'll need to learn, where there are not full orbitals, just to remain stability. So for me to draw out the rest of the configuration for this, you'd start from argon, which is a full outer shell. So what happens here is that one of the electrons that would have been in the 4s2 suborbital is actually put into the 3d orbital so that it can because otherwise it would be left like this you know with that full but instead the electron that would have been in 4s2 is moved down to the lower energy of 3d just making happier singly filled electrons that are just more balanced so this is just something you'll get really used to seeing in chemistry and there's lots more interesting things that can be done with electronic configuration. So with the transition metals, there's actually something even more interesting, you know, um, with the ion. When forming a transition element, we actually lose electrons from the 4s2 subshell first. From iron metal to Fe3+, to lose the electrons, we take them from the 4s orbital first and that would just be removing one, removing two, and then removing another. That would just form a more stable three plus iron. So I hope this video has been really, really useful. 
and that you've learned a bit of chemistry. So I just hope that this has been really useful to you, even if you're just enjoying your summer, this can just be a bit of science for you and I hope that everything goes well. Stay safe and thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.